This is a fucking rant video! I'm gonna never, no, never goodbye. Sometimes I feel like they're actually singing in German and I'm the only one who's not understanding the lyrics. Let's start with the spoiler free version of this video. Just in case you haven't seen the previous seasons and the spoiler free version is please don't watch season three. It fucking sucks, it ruins everything. It's time to stop, okay? We're actually not gonna be challenging the logic and the science of, uh, of Dark overall because I actually think that the third season was needed when it comes to the logic and the science to complete the cycle. Do you like me? Yes. Definitely. Absolutely. I rigged it. My whole problem with this third season, and it's what I'm gonna try to explain in this video, it's that narratively speaking, emotionally speaking, it just didn't work. It just ended up feeling completely empty. And I think it's a bit of a shame because the first two seasons of Dark, without even exaggerating, are uh, the best when it comes to time travel stories. It's the best kind of attempt I've ever seen. It goes into so many different things when it comes to time loop uh, paradoxes, time entanglements. The problem for me when it comes to season three is that it got so focused into the science part that it completely forgot all the character development that we went through with the characters in the first two, two seasons just because it desperately, almost in a condescending way, wanted us to explain how everything was exactly written like this since the beginning and that we were supposed to just kneel down and take everything in and have nothing neg negative to say about it just because it felt right. In the microcosm, what is reality? reality? What if the science is is in one nature and death you can't kill yourself because your older self already exists. Time will not permit it. I feel like this idea has been developed uh, not quite to its potential since uh, almost since the beginning of the story because we had only a couple of paradoxes uh, that uh, were linked to this idea. The first one being when uh, Noah tries to kill Adam and the gun doesn't work. And the second, it's when Jonas actually tries to kill himself and uh, he, just, he just doesn't manage it to. This is a problem that uh, becomes even more evident when it comes to the third season and that it's that uh, in the first and the second season, the travelers, they had very small tasks to complete and uh, it was almost impossible for them to, uh, to fail at those tasks. It was literally just go to this place, go to this person, give them this and then that's it. And then at one point another traveler will come to you and will give you more information to what you actually have to do next. But my problem is when it comes to the third season everything starts going so completely insane. The apocalypse of course has happened so Jonas his motivation is at the lowest when it comes to the him trying to save uh, the timeline and for me that moment when he actually tries to kill himself felt like a really powerful moment and it felt like it didn't have any important ramifications. It didn't actually have the ramifications that it was supposed to. I think it was a shame that in the third season they didn't show, for example, travelers failing at what they were supposed to do and uh, for those things to actually happen anyways, just because of determinism, just because of fate. And I feel like just the idea that these travelers and especially Jonas would be so committed to their journey forever and for me it would have been so simple to just show that uh, some of the travelers were having doubts and uh, maybe they just abandoned their mission and uh, went to do something completely different and they could have shown that by doing that still because of determinism still because of fate the mission was still completed and it would show how even a traveler that doesn't want to commit to the mission in the end he would still be responsible for the final outcome Honestly, maybe this is just my opinion, because from a scientific perspective, as I said, it could actually work. But I think the idea of having a parallel universe doesn't work at all. It doesn't work because it starts, as you see in the third season, creating characters, creating doubles of our characters that we're not supposed to care about because we know that they're not the official versions. This happens, for example, when uh, 
Jonas gets killed by Martha in the in the future in the parallel dimension where there are three Marthas that is not actually our Jonas that is not the Jonas that we've been following for so long it's another Jonas that has been created by the disruption of, uh, of time and uh, same thing when it comes to when Adam uh, uh, finally kills uh, Martha and the baby that she's carrying I didn't feel anything for that character just because it was not our Martha and actually I think that goes to with the entire alternate dimension I feel like the problem with the parallel dimension uh, theory is that you can basically pick and choose which copies of the characters you want to care about and I think it's a bit dangerous to do that because you kind of lose focus on who are the real characters and you almost start seeing uh, Adam and Jonas and Martha and Eva as different characters instead of being the same characters but at different uh, stages over their lives, you know? Of course it creates an interesting dynamic when it comes to Adam versus Eva but at the end of the day this also creates so many different new travelers. Almost every single main character in the story becomes a traveler by the end and I know that maybe people will say that it's not, def it's not necessarily a problem but I think it is just because the idea of uh, these travelers of this secret society has always been uh, very mysterious when it comes to the first two seasons and in the third season it just feels like Martha is just standing around being like you're a traveler, you're a traveler, you get a traveler badge, you get a traveler badge it feels like literally like a Pokemon version of Dark Who's that Pokemon? It just like everyone becomes a traveler and they start traveling back and they all have a, a role to play you know and I think it's a bit of a shame just because like I think you could definitely have minor characters which still have a part to play in the in the story which they do when you come when you look at the first and the second seasons but um, you don't have to make them all travelers they don't have to all become travelers to seem relevant to the plot you know Jonas of course was a traveler Noah, Adam, Martha, Eva, uh, Claudia the three unknown we have uh, Tronte, Silja, Magnus, uh, Agnes, Egon, Bartosz, Francisca and Elizabeth all of those characters, and I probably have forgotten a couple of ones who are actually travelers. By the way, my definition of travelers would be someone who consciously goes back to the past to fulfill some kind of prophecy or to fulfill a mission that someone else has, uh, has given to them. The Martha vs. Eva narrative doesn't work at all. They were really trying so hard to make it look in the same way as Jonas vs. Adam, but the problem is that the, this relationship between Jonas and Adam has been building up for two seasons, while Martha and Eva has just been for a couple of episodes and the thing is they have no reason to hate each other and I'm talking about alternative Mar Martha of course um, all she did was uh, meet Jonas who told her that everything was wrong and that the apocalypse was gonna happen she lived through the apocalypse she thinks that most of her friends or family members have died during the apocalypse but she did not live through the same thing that Jonas did she never uh, were transported for example to the future and uh, almost hanged by, by one of the main characters she did not have to uh, experience the disappearance of uh, of Mikkel and uh, of all the other children or not in the same way anyways and she did not have to slowly discover like all these antagonistic forces that were working against her basically this alternative Martha is just spoon-fed all the information that she needs to know she's told that you have to do this you have to do this you have to do this so it means that her character development is almost non-existent she doesn't have to make any kind of choices because she's very quickly confronted with the middle-aged versions and the old version of herself who tells her this is how it is you have to do it you have you don't have a choice honestly i think that uh, the eva versus um, adam rivalry should have been there since the beginning hey guys look at my girlfriend i'm your cousin <laughs> what the fuck? Honestly, if you wanted to make it perfect, if you wanted to have something that works thematically and that works emotionally, you should have had these two forces fighting since the beginning. Maybe the series would have been even more confusing since it was both dealing with uh, time travel and parallel universes at the same time. But I think if they managed to do that, I think it would have been a lot more, uh, more interesting 
to watch. And actually, I think that they should have done four seasons. I don't think that three seasons is the good amount. I understand that everything works in three and everything was like this since the beginning, but uh, it doesn't work emotionally. It, it's not stable to have two seasons that focus on one universe, a third season that focuses barely on one universe because that universe is very early destroyed by this, the same apocalypse. And then we have the final like 20 minutes when we actually get to see the origin world and we don't give a shit about the origin world because we've seen it only for 20 fucking minutes. I think what they should have done is two seasons in one universe, two seasons in the other universe. And if they were smart, they would have made us care about the second universe as much as we were caring for the first universe. A part of us was um, rooting for Jonas and a part of us was rooting for Martha the same way we were rooting for Adam or we were rooting for Eva. Plus, when you think about it, Eva's plan makes no sense. She wants to save the child, but the child doesn't even have a name. The child is the unknown. So honestly, like how hypocritical of her to want to save this child so badly and the child is a fucking psychopath when you look at him and we have no idea in what timeline he has grown up because of course we have the three versions of the unknown the child the middle-aged and the, the old version and uh, there is no character development when it comes to the unknown it's literally it, it is presented as a force of evil like Noah if not even worse because Noah at least seemed to be very conscious about what he was doing the unknown just feels like uh, something evil that is lurking around this is another important point that I think uh, needs to be developed a bit and it's that the time aberrations are starting to be so prevalent in the third season to the point of non-belief honestly like I understand the idea that uh, at the end of the day these two universes are not supposed to exist and that's why everyone is fucking everyone and there is so much incest or you're the grandfather of uh, your own self but the problem with that is that um, the more time aberrations they try to create the more uh, cycles they try to um, create in between all the characters well the more we don't care about that universe and the more we realize that even if it dies it, it's it's okay because it fucking sucks it sucks for everyone and i think it's annoying because when you think about it we've built we've been building up this universe for two seasons and then a third season just for the message to be these universes actually because of the old time travel stuff they fucking suck so we're gonna let them die try to recreate the mikkel kanvald uh, paradox with every single character but the more they do it with different characters and the more it starts becoming completely insane and uh, completely unbelievable and even from an emotional standpoint you just sit there and be like okay like it doesn't matter at some point you you will fuck your own uh, child and uh, you will have another child with that child who is actually your dad for me it makes no sense for the series for the third season actually to create so much drama honestly like it's it feels like the series in the third season just wanted to torture the characters as much as possible just to show us that they all suck and they all have disgusting lives so maybe they should all die so why does Bartosz's wife Silja need to die like I don't understand why Hannah needs to live a shitty life everywhere she goes why can Katarina actually not succeed as saving uh, the old version of Ulrich that makes no sense I mean honestly you should count how many times Ulrich is almost uh, saved by one of the main characters uh, just in the third season. Like when you look at him in the eyes, it's literally just like he's basically begging you to kill him. People keep teasing the idea that he might actually be free at some point to live a couple of years outside the mental institution and it never happened. And I think honestly that's the lowest point of emotional manipulation when it comes to the show's uh, writers. And that's one of those really tiny nuances that would have helped me digest the ending a bit more. Just because, as I said, if there is no happiness, if there is no hope, then I don't care about losing these two universes. And if I don't care about using the universes, then uh, there, is no, there are no stakes when it comes to the actual, the final sacrifice of Martha and uh, Jonas. Can we all agree that the origin world fucking sucks? Because the whole problem when it comes to create time aberration is that every single character starts to be connected by the time loop. And if every single character is connected by the time loop, it means that if the time loop is destroyed, those characters cease to exist. So we find ourselves in the last 20 minutes of this great show with all the characters that we don't care about because they've not been through the same emotional journey that we have. So the only middle-aged main characters who remain in the origin world are those who weren't born as a result of time travel. We got Hannah, Katharina, Peter, Regina, and the Wooler siblings. Additionally, Claudia and Bernd are shown to be Regina's parents, 
In the origin world, Peter is in relation to Bernadette. Regina and Katerina are happy and single since Ulrich never existed in the origin world and Regina never met Alexander or Boris. And Hannah is expecting a child with Torben Wuller. The six of them enjoy dinner in Regina's house, which was the Cannibal residence in Adam's world and the Nielsen residence in Eva's world. Amidst the thunderstorm, Hannah notices a yellow raincoat, similar to the one worn by Jonas and Martha in the respective world, and experiences an intense déjà vu. Her recollection bears similarities to the fate of the two worlds, implying that their events have still influenced the origin world in some way. When asked what she will name her child, Anna takes a moment to think and decides on a name. Jonas. I think the, the final question that I will leave you with when it comes to this video is, should we actually care about the origin world? And uh, do you actually think that the showrunners made a good effort when it comes to making us feel a sense of satisfaction when it comes to having uh, given up so much to save these people? And I think that the answer is no. I think they could have handled it a lot better. I think even they could have done it in more than just uh, 20 minutes. Why don't I care about these characters? The first example would be the relationship between Peter and Bernadette. Peter had uh, an affair with Bernadette, but at the end of the day, we don't really feel any, any deep love and affection in between them. Bernadette is even a super secondary character. So we have no idea who she is. We have no idea who uh, she wants to be and her place in the time loop. She actually has no t place in the time loop. Same thing when, uh, when it comes to her brother, whose, whose only interesting thing is that he's got an eye patch. <laughs> And he's been pretty useless for the entire series and I have no idea why he's there. Hannah, I hate Hannah. Even though before I know that I said that why doesn't she at least get to be happy when she time travels the first time. But honestly, I don't want her to be happy. She's such a horrible character. So basically you're saying that just by deleting Ulrich, she never, she was never jealous of the relationship that uh, was created between Ulrich and Katarina, and because of that she was just not a shitty person? Regina, she's been, she's been diagnosed with cancer, that's it. That's all she did for the past three seasons. So I'm happy she doesn't have cancer, but uh, that doesn't make me happy when it comes to all the other people who actually were sacrificed for her to not have cancer. I guess. And uh, Katarina is actually a really good character and I'm a bit sad just because the version that we get to see at the dinner table, it's not the one that we know. She's never met Ulrich so she doesn't have a family, which means that Magnus and Martha don't exist. Just the idea that Ulrich doesn't exist only, honestly makes me sad, even though like he's cheated on a lot of his partners, I think he's uh, one of those tragic characters that are really cool to see redeemed after a while. Just to see that we're presented with these B characters at the end of the entire series, at the end of the journey, and we're teased with the idea that maybe actually Jonas will be born at some point just because Hannah is pregnant again. It's so lame. I feel like um, Dark Season 3 fell in the same trap that How I Met Your Mother fell in when it was uh, getting to its, uh, its final season. And spoilers for How I Met Your Mother. Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. Bears do not... What is going on? What are you doing? That series ended with uh, Ted actually ending up with Robin. Even though they've spent the entire series showing how they were not compatible at all from an emotional perspective, from their personalities, from uh, their beliefs. But since they wrote that at the beginning, at the very first season, and they said that uh, that was the, the target ending, they felt like they had to meet that target ending, you know? This regarding the fact that we spent, uh, what, six or seven seasons being involved in his quest for finding the woman with the yellow umbrella and who gets killed almost like instantly after a couple of episodes. And Dark did the exact same thing. Even though they had this idea of uh, playing everything around the number three, 
So three seasons, three different versions of the main characters, uh, 33 years in between the different time loops, three worlds. I feel like they got so stuck into that kind of logic and fitting everything together that they forgot to actually um, tell a consistent emotional journey when it comes to the characters that, that we've been following for the entire uh, three seasons. But I feel like when you memory wipe everyone, so when you're actually confronted with characters that uh, you don't know, the message of the series becomes, look at what all these people had to go through for them to live. For the people sitting at this table to live, who have no idea what happened. For me, the third season actually felt like a reboot. Honestly, it felt like a reboot of the uh, entire series. And it could have worked. It could have worked thematically, as I said, if maybe they they turned on the light when they were supposed to, like uh, I'm about to do. And I think it would have worked. It would have definitely worked if they spent more time actually making us uh, invest in the alternative universe a bit more. And uh, of course, as you saw, I called this video Dark Light to You. And I called it this way because that's how I felt during the entire third season. <laughs> Every single time their character said, oh, he or she lied to you. It became so cartoonish after a while. Everyone was being lied to. And at the end of the day, I just didn't care. I didn't care who was lying to who. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know uh, your theories about the show in the comments. And uh, if like me, you were, you felt like this was an emotional letdown, maybe not a logical letdown, but an emotional letdown. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you still haven't. I really enjoy doing this type of videos because as you can see, I'm really passionate about the stuff that I'm talking about. I'm really going into, into really small details that I think are really important. I'm Patrick, and this is Torn Apart. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh.